Coming up, I have an ad 6155 cassette deck in for service. This one comes in from a client. He says it plays no problem, but it won't fast forward and rewind. So likely we're going to have a belt issue on this. So first, we're going to test it out before taking it apart to see what's wrong with it. I'm going to just make sure that it actually does what has been claimed. So we'll load up a tape. We'll check it out and see if it records, or sorry, see if it plays and rewinds and fast forwards. Okay, so it's not rewinding and it's not fast forwarding very well, but rewind is real the, the big problem on this one. Let's see if I put it into play. Fast forward seems to be working okay. But look at rewind, it's really quite sluggish. Of course, now it's going to work, but first time I tried it, rewind didn't move very well at all. So let's put it into rewind. Okay, uh, okay, it's gonna be a belt. That belt is pretty, uh, pretty loose. How's the other belts on this one? Uh, capstan belt feels okay. Let's let the music start here. Yeah, lots of torque there, but this belt here is, this belt's a bit weak. And the reason why fast forward is working better is when I put it in fast forward, right, it's under higher tension. Watch what happens when I put it into rewind. It'll actually move to the left so the belt is not quite as tight in that direction. So what I need to do is I need to change this belt. This looks like this is going to be a pretty simple fix on this one. So here's the procedure to change the belt on one of these NAD 6155s. These ones are actually quite easy to change. Probably one of the easiest belts that you're ever going to change on any tape deck. All you need to do is remove the belt first of all from the top pulley and we just have to temporarily remove the bottom belt. And the easiest way to keep this from, from falling down is to tape it in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple pieces of black tape just to tape the belt in two place, two locations to the top of the to the top of the pinch or the the, uh, the flywheel. This will prevent the belt from falling off while I work on it. Okay. Now that I've taped the belt in place, as you can see. I've got two bits of tape, one on the top and then I rotated it around to the bottom. Now I can go in here and I can just unloop the belt from the pulley, get it out of the way, and I can just let the belt sit there because it's not going to go anywhere because I've taped it in place on both sides. The other bit of tape, as you can see, is on the bottom of the, uh, the flywheel. I guess you can't see it, but trust me, it's there. Now I just have to go and find a replacement belt and I probably have one of this size because this is a relatively common one. In fact, this belt is probably a perfect candidate to uh, throw in the microwave and boil. So maybe we'll try that and I'll show you guys how I go about doing that. Now note the shape of the belt when I start, how deformed it is. When it comes out of here it should be completely round so I'm just going to drop the belt into the water and set the microwave on full power. This is 1200 watts. So I'll, I'll uh, nuke it here for about uh, 15 or so minutes. And now we just sit back and wait.
So after boiling, you can see that we've boiled away a good percentage of the water here. This has uh, been cooking there for a good 15 minutes. We're going to let it cool a bit, take the belt out and let it dry, and then put it back on into the tape deck, and it should fix the problem. So now, as you can see, the belt has now returned to its normal shape. doesn't have the big stretched out appearance like it did before. I'm just going to let the belt fully dry, and then we'll put it back in here. And I bet you, I bet it's going to fix the problem because it usually does. This is a these belts, these type of belts are a really good candidate for heating them up in boiling hot water for 15 or so minutes because uh, they are not a natural rubber belt. This is a synthetic belt. So reinstalling the belt, just take the belt, loop it down behind the the motor to the back part of the pulley. like that. And now I just need to get the capstan belt back on again. So remember I've got it taped in place to hold it. So I just grab the belt. I should be able to pull it around the motor again. Okay. I've got the belt back on. Grab my drive belt that I just put back in behind here. Get it into the back pulley and around. And now I can just take off my tape that I put on here to hold the capstan belt in place while I was working on it. Turn it around, take the other piece off here. Let's uh, see if I fixed it. So remember it was slipping on a rewind. So there's the tape in, and there's rewind. Back to the beginning. Rewind. Yep. As you'll see, we'll move the camera around the front. Remember before, we had very slow rewind. No problem. That is how you fix a belt by boiling it and again most cases unless the belt is too badly stretched or it's a, a real pure rubber belt that is melting uh, the neoprene and the other synthetic belts you know nine out of ten of them will return to their original tension so to give you an idea how much torque we've restored to this belt if I stop this see that I actually stole the motor out by just hanging onto the pulley. So, uh, yes. That answers your question, how much torque has been restored? Lots. Oodles. This this counter belt was probably could have been done too, but oh, it's not in bad shape. It's not in bad shape, it's just not riding in its pulley properly here. Counter belt's not supposed to be tight or super tight, right? Anyway, let's, uh, we'll, we're going to give this machine a work over, uh, check it over, check the speed out on it as well. So it's going to fire up the old digital scope here. That's, that's one thing I, I have been using my digital scope for is for checking the frequency out because, of course, it has a built-in frequency counter. So I'll just connect the scope up here to my speaker terminals and we get the, uh, the test tape out. And as you can see, that's supposed to be 440 hertz. It's a little high, so we're going to adjust the speed to bring this deck to the correct speed. Speed adjustment on this one is a control on the back. We just have to insert a screwdriver into the little hole in the back of the motor here. Let me find a smaller one than this. close 441 Let's see if we can get it right on
that's pretty darn close. I'm going to say that's close enough. 440 is always going to be a slight variance, right? But that's uh, that's as close as I think we're going to get it on this unit here. If you guys want to hear something funny, at the very, very beginning of this tape, before I put tone on it, take a listen to this. You guys know what that was? Sound off in the comments and tell me what you think that tone was. I know what it is, so I'll tell you if you're right. And you can't just tell me what you think it is. I want you guys that really know the sound. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a cassette load for an old computer. Okay, that's a no-brainer. I'll tell you that much, okay? I want to know what type of computer did it. And you guys that uh, know the old computers will know that sound and you will know what computer stored that data on that tape. This that shows how old this tape is. This was the tape that had been used back from the cassette era when cassettes were used before we had floppy drives. I'll let you guys hear it again. What do you think it is? So next we're going to clean and demagnetize the head. I'm not going to do a head alignment on this thing because uh, I don't believe it needs it. It's you know it's never been touched. The factory settings are still there and that's not why it was brought in. It was brought in because it wouldn't rewind. So let's demagnetize first. So I'll use my homemade demagnetizer and I'll just bring it down in here and get it in kind of relatively close to the head. There we go. That'll demagnetize the head. Unplug that thing as it gets warm pretty quick. Draws a fair bit of current through that uh, that coil. Okay, head is demagnetized. We'll clean it now, and I'm going to then do a test recording. That's a fair bit of uh, dirt in this thing. Oh, I can hear it now. The uh, the anti uh, the anti isopropyl alcohol crowd is going to be screaming because I clean the pinch roller with isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna, I can hear it now. That dries out the rubber. That dries out the rubber. I can hear them screaming now. And you know what? You're probably right. Eventually it will. That's why we clean it off when we're done. But it's better than having the thing coated with tape oxide and slipping. Okay, time to make a test recording. I'll record on side B on my tape. Let me hook up my music source. Oh, the little player that the trolls were whining about me cutting it, not cutting it straight, or not marking it straight, cutting it with, how did they cut it? It didn't cut it straight. Um, you know what? Looks like it's mounted in there pretty straight to me. Yeah, I know I broke the cover putting it together, but it's an old box. 
I was just m mounting my MP3 player in there. And this is how the MP3 player looks now. I've got all my music on a little SD card, so I don't have to have a USB stick sticking out of the front of it, waiting to get broken. So I've got my player set up here, and we'll get the level set. I'm going to put it into record, pause. So pause button down, and then record. And I'll set my levels over here. So on the deck here, I have to set there's a bias control which I'm going to leave set at zero, but you can tweak the bias manually if you want on this. It has Dolby B and Dolby C. And you set your tape type, type one, type two, or type four. It does have a multiplex filter if you were using it for an FM broadcast. First thing I want to do is I want to take a listen as I rotate the record level and balance control just to see if the record level controls themselves need to be cleaned. So I'm just going to turn the volume up a bit. Yes. I do believe the controls need to be cleaned. So let's do that first. So I'm going to clean the switches here as well as the record play switch over here and the level controls. So we'll start out with the level controls. I can get right into the back of the control here, no problem. This is the record level and the balance control. So I can rotate this back and forth. Make sure it's clean. to do the selector switch here that's for the Dolby switching Dolby B and Dolby C and we'll do the tape switch Of course, we can't forget the record play switch. So let's do the record play switch over here. I'm looking for the best place to get into this to clean it. Probably this side down here. Then we'll just activate the switch back and forth. Okay, let's uh, proceed to do our test recording. So first I'll set my record levels. It's good to me. Zero my counter. Check a track to record. I think that one will do. It's got a kind of punchy. So I'll cue that track up, and uh, we'll record it. Where are we here? Okay, we're ready to roll the next track. Got it all cued. Release the pause. Skip to track 274. Let that record, and then we'll play it back and see how it sounds. You guys may have noticed I am uh, recording this without any Dolby whatsoever and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, playback on the scope and see if it looks similar to how it was recorded. As you can see I'm pushing the tape pretty hard here. I'm pushing it to plus five. This is a high bias tape. Yeah, it should be good for that. You see the unit should uh, be able to handle this no problem because this does have 
the HX Pro headroom extension. So what that does is that reduces the bias on high signal level so that you don't oversaturate the tape. So we should be able to get that plus five should come back no problem. That's it, let's rewind the tape and see how it sounds. I zeroed the counter, so we get back to zero. We should have playback. Waveform on playback looks nice and clean. Another recording, this time I'll do this one in uh, Dolby C. You guys will recognize this one. Okay, here we go. We'll uh, play that one back. They'll be C. There we go. That is all done. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.